This is the Suzuki Solerio, and it's actually the cheapest car I've ever reviewed for CarWow because it starts from just seven and a half thousand pounds. In fact, you know, for that, you could get a VIP luxury holiday in Thailand. Now, why am I mentioning that? Well, it's because this car is actually built in Thailand. But if you want to save a bit more cash, you can click up there, go to carway.co.uk. You can then build your ideal Suzuki Solerio. You'll then get five great offers back from top dealers, and then you can compare prices without having to haggle or from the comfort of your own home. So this car, it may be cheap, but is it cheerful? Let's have a look. Well, to be brutally honest, no, not particularly. I'm not going to criticize this car for all the brittle plastics about the place because it's inexpensive but I do think that Suzuki could have done a little bit more with the design. It's just a bit drab, really. Still, everything is neatly laid out, so it's dead easy to use all things like the climate control and stuff like that. I say climate control, it's a bit of a lie. It's more just air conditioning. You don't actually get the air conditioning on the base spec model. This is the mid-spec car and it does have it, but you're gonna need this mid-spec car if you want things like Bluetooth audio, and this car costs from 9,000 pounds. I'd like to talk about the infotainment system, but there's not much to say because that's all you get. There's no touchscreen, there's no sat-nav, there's nothing. Hmm. Even this mid-level car has this, look. Look, manual door mirrors. That's, that's like living in the 90s. Another thing that's weird about this car is that while there's loads of space, look at this, I've got loads of headroom, I can jack up the seats and height adjustment is standard on all models. Cubby spaces are a bit odd. So yes, you've got a decent glove box, there's some space there for your mobile phone and a charging point. You've got a couple of cup holders there, but the side door bins aren't large enough to take even a small bottle. They seem to have been designed for some long pieces of vegetable because they just fit absolutely perfectly. Ironically though, if you hop into the back, you'll see that the rear passengers do indeed have some decent door bins down there. Look at that. So there's actually room for two. And that's where this car makes the most sense here in the back. It's cheap, but it's, it's reasonably large considering how small it is. So knee room's all right, but look at the headroom. Look at that. Tall people, people over six foot will be fine back here. Also, unlike a Volkswagen up, you have three seat belts so you can carry three people in the back and it is doable at a squeeze. Another thing that's pretty good is, I don't know if you can see, the windows are huge. Plus, if you look at this one, winds all the way down. Now, it is a windy window on this particular model, but the top spec car does have electric back windows. Let's move on to the boot. So, for this size of car, it's pretty blooming good actually. Look, you can fit a large suitcase underneath the parcel shelf. There's not too much of a lip actually compared to some other rival cars such as a Hyundai i10. Under here, I wonder what there is. There's that. Tire inflation kit and some extra space around there. But other than that, that's, that's your boot pretty much taken care of. There's not really much going on in there. <clears throat> right, let's just get that out of the way. And then I'll show you this, what it's like, oh dear, <laughs> when you fold the seats down. So the space, because the car is nice and tall, is decent. The problem is the huge difference between this part of the boot and this part. So it does make it harder to push larger items to the back. So if that was really heavy, yeah, it's a bit of a struggle to get it up there. If you want to find out more about the practicality, click up there to watch my detailed video. You'll see just how much stuff I could cram into this car's boot, what it's like with three adults in the back, and how easy it is to fit a child seat. So now we've looked round the car, let's see what it's like to drive. It's very important for a car such as this to be nice and easy to drive in town. And on the whole, the Suzuki is. For instance, you get great visibility, you've got big back window, and the blind spots, they're not too bad at all. And you can click up there to see for yourself by joining me for a 360 degree passenger ride video. Another thing about the car is that, well, the controls, the gearbox, the brakes, the clutch, they're all nice. However, there is one small problem, and that's the steering. So let's say you just go around a mini roundabout. There we go. The steering doesn't really unwind very naturally. It just like takes ages and they, come on, come on. It's just, yeah, it's all a bit odd actually. Then there's the suspension. So it's a bit on the firm side and it does jiggle about. This car seems to have developed a rattle and that slightly firm suspension is making that rattle worse. Mm, that's quite annoying. But if you didn't have that rattle, I'd say still most of the time this car is all right around town. There we go, the steering again. Oh no, did it that time. You never know, it's inconsistent. You don't know what it's gonna do. Just bizarre, the steering. 
Now, should you encounter a twisty road in your Suzuki Solario, don't worry, it'll actually go around a corner okay. That slightly firm suspension means it doesn't roll too much at all, so you won't end up feeling too car sick. There's not much in the way of grip, so if you go too fast into a corner, it will just start to gradually wash wide. The biggest problem is the steering once again. It's like you, you turn the wheel and it pauses and then it reacts. So you have to plan your turn. So here's a turn, I'm turning the wheel and now the car's turning. I wouldn't normally criticize a car like this for its steering, you know. It's a little bit too motoring journalisty, but it's so odd in this car, it deserves to be pointed out. Now let's say that you eventually need to go on a long distance journey. What is this car like on the motorway? So it's all right, you know, it's, it's okay. The major problem is the engine. It's fine for nipping about around town, but when you want to cruise along the motorway, then maybe overtake someone, you're going to need to do plenty of planning, because even when you drop it down a couple of gears, it doesn't really accelerate. Yeah. And then when you go in at speed, like 70 miles an hour, which I eventually got to, you get this right racket as the road noise just echoes around this car's cabin. Oh my God, I need to do something to take my mind off that. I know, I'll chew on this. Now all I can hear is chewing celery in my, in my head. No, I can still hear the road noise, that's no good. Actually, there's more annoying things about this car. Here's five. Pairing your mobile phone to the car's Bluetooth for the first time takes absolutely ages that I'm not going to show you here because you'll get so bored, click out and go watch someone else's car review video. This car is so cheap that they haven't even bothered to try and disguise the locking wheel nut. And I'm not entirely sure that someone would ever want to steal these alloys anyway. The manual wing mirror controls are not only old fashioned, they're a real pain to set on the left hand side of the car because when you get it just right, when you sit back in your position, it's not right, so I'm going to have to move it again. Still not right, let's move it a bit down. Yeah, yeah you, you get the idea. For some reason, there's no wheel arch liners at the back, so you're going to get all kinds of rubbish stuck in there. Where did Suzuki find these indicator repeaters? The 1980s? It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. Most small cars rear doors open to about here. These ones open all the way to here. Makes it easier to get in. If you get the one litre engine with dual jet technology, it has a higher compression ratio, different fuel injectors and stop start for improved economy. There's this little slot for the safety belt. That means it doesn't snag when you pull the rear seats down. The rear windscreen wiper is pretty large, so it clears a decent area. You can move the front seats from this position to this position that quickly. Handy if you want to look alert. If you click it there, you can go to carwire.co.uk for more information and to compare offers on the Suzuki Solario. So then my verdict on it, should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should consider the Suzuki Solario. It does feel a bit budget, but then it is actually really good value for money. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it and click on our logo to subscribe to our channel. Also click on the video windows for more CarWow videos. Now then, did you spot the Easter egg in this video? It was the celery in the car's door bin. Get it? Celery? Solario. Yeah. <laughs>